And welcome back to MLG Pro Scrims. I'm Mr. X, and I'm joined by Doc from the AU. What is going on? And we are playing, it's going to be Freight Search and Destroy with TK up one map to zero. This is going to be an absolute rip. It's going to be interesting too, because you said TK, you know, more dominant in the Search and Destroy. I, I thought they were more stronger in the respawn game, as we just had a little bit of a discussion about it. So it's going to be interesting. I'm also just having a look at, you know, what's happening, you know, on Twitter and whatnot. A lot of people going for TK in this series. You know, they want uh, Team Caliber to take this one out over Curse, but it's, it's going to be interesting. You know, off, you know, so far it's only been about a minute and it's all up to kill a last one alive in a one-on-two situation. Yeah, and this map is extremely difficult to clutch these one-on-two situations. But, I mean, as you can see on your screen, I think Theory and Sharp are playing this perfectly. Like we said, they're they're a very good search and destroy team. Sharp can probably hear the bomb over at A. You can hear if it's going to go down. And Theory can see the cross all the way over to B. So I really like the plays out of these two players. Definitely. They're showing those, you know, little sneaky spots on maps, which, you know, pro players, when it does come down to it, they need to know those spots then. Fury, he's obviously got the headset cranked up because he heard Killer right behind him. Turn, does a little bit of a turnaround, takes him out. So that's going to be first round down to TK. So brilliant job by them. That's exactly the start they needed. You know, there's nothing worse than already going down straight off the bat to a team like Curse, which just absolutely thrive off, you know, as we were talking about that hype factor. Yeah, and absolutely. And this side, I want to go on board with Curse. I want to see how they're going to play this. And you have Nameless who's sniping for them. You know, sniping on this game is extremely important. You see every team pretty much at least rock one sniper on Search and Destroy. And, you know, it's really, it's a very powerful just just person to have on the map. He can, oh, yeah. They're so dominant in this game, and I like the usage of the USR. I like that gun a lot better than the L115. Uh, it, yeah, I kind of agree with you on that. So it's a little bit of preferences, but something I did notice, Parasite threw down a trophy system, and I'm not too sure about you, but in the Australian scene, you very rarely see that, and it seems like something that the Americans are adapting really well, especially in their search game. I casted over a uh, series two days ago, and in Search and Destroy, they're throwing trophies all around the place, and I found it very interesting, because in my opinion, you can just chuck on that pack resistance, and you're all good. Yeah, you know, I think that a lot of teams are using trophy systems uh, because of those danger close grenades, because there really wasn't a counter. But you see actually TK is going to take round two also, and you know, Clay's during that final kill camp. And Clay does not look like he's missing a beat since uh, the, just, you know, just joining TK, obviously leaving complexity after a long time. And he looks like he's fitting in extremely well over here at TK. He seems like, we've already seen him play that respawn game mode, and He's uh, still been pretty dominant, so very interesting, and didn't miss a single shot, as you said previously. So we'll get on board with one of the TK players. I would like to see someone who's going to be in the middle of the action. How about Neslo? He's got that USR, USR out, which you like to favor, and he's got that thermal scope too, which I, I'm not too sure about you, but I love thermal in this game. It is so good compared to previous Call of Duty. Yeah, I mean, thermal is just really important in general in this game especially because, you know, if we're going to ban the tracker site, you know, tracker site probably needs to go because when you flip down the iron sights, it's pretty overpowered with each gun. Uh, that thermal is really the only counter to smoke grenades. So it's really important that we at least leave one of those. And you see Clay picking up two kills right off the bat. And, you know, he is just on fire tonight. He started off this round, this game, seven and two. Wow. That, that is ridiculous. I've seen players not even get seven kills after 11 rounds. He is having a phenomenal effort, and he's been a real powerhouse as to why TK are already up to two, two to nothing in this. It's first to six, so there's a possibility for 11 rounds. But with less than 30 seconds left, you're now going to see Curse start to push up and try and make some plays. We just saw Killer. He gave away his location, but took out one of the TK players. So it's going to be a 2v2. Nameless, that was a big kill there. Taking out another TK player, and he finds the last one. Brilliant job by him getting the two-piece, as you'll see in the kill cam. He spots Sharp, good awareness by him, pokes the corner, and Neslo left in no man's land. Such an easy kill for a player like Nameless. Yeah, and I mean, that was a huge round for Curse to go down 3-0 to a team of Team Caliber's caliber. Not to, like, just, you know, it was just ridiculous use of words, but uh, to go down to a team of that caliber, it's extremely difficult to come back, except on the, especially on their strongest game mode. And, you know, right now I'm on with the Curse guys, and I'm on with Nameless again. He's 
He's using the sniper rifle, the USR, like we said, but instead of thermal, he's using variable scope, which I see a lot oh. of players opt to use now. But we have Parasite picking up two players right off the bat. So I mean, huge play out of Parasite. It's really interesting. Parasite was actually at the back of his spawn relatively. He was stuck in that warehouse area. So obviously, Nez, uh, Fury and Sharp, they went through a little bit of an aggressive push. And Parasite was just there like a brick wall and just shut them down immediately. And this is exactly what Curse needed. They needed another one on the board. They needed to tie it up. And they did spot a play in the middle of the map there. Not too sure about Parasite there challenging that. But he ended up taking out Nezlo somehow. So it's all up to Clayster in a one on three situation. And he is the man you want left alive if you're on TK. Right, and I mean, I love the way that the Curse guys are playing this. They're not being too aggressive and not good, just going to push in there one by one and feed Clayster an easy kill. Excellent and job, I mean, right there, you see they play that perfectly. A lot of times you see a team, they'll get a one-on-three situation, and, you know, the one player will just run in there and get taken out haphazardly. And then, I mean, the next thing you know, it's, it goes from a three-on-one to a one-on-one. -on -one. But right there, oh, I mean, yeah. that's where you see the experience out of these curse guys. I mean, they they were they were Call of Duty World Champions last year. These guys are definitely, I mean, they they want that winning back. And I'm gonna go on board with them right now because you know, I, we haven't really seen much of what teams do on offense on this side. But it's usually pretty much is just a standard strategy to push A. Yeah, definitely, and it seems like it's working out pretty pretty well for them. I'm looking at the scoreboard, and everyone from Curse is dropping some solid numbers. None of them really doing too bad of a job, but you look at the flip side, TK, Clayster, the only one who's dropping positive. You know, Fury's got the 2-2, two two, so he's rocking that, you know, flat KD. But Neslo, 1 for 4, Sharp, 0 for 3. That is why, TK, they haven't been able to take out these final two rounds. In a, you can't rely on one player to win you search and destroy games, even though Clayster is having a brilliant game so far. And look at the kill feed, actually. Neslo got another one on the board, so he's showing some life as Clayster cleans up another player. So it's up to Nameless and Miracles in a two-on-four. And these two, they need to combine together. They need to slow it down a little bit. But with 30 seconds left, they need to start to actually make some plays. Yeah, and you know, right there, that's a huge pick from Nameless. If Miracles is able to just win a gun battle over here back in their spawn, you know, they're they're in a workable situation, but right now they need to work for some kind of pick because they need to work it into a two-on-two. -two. And, I mean, right there for Miracles, that's definitely not what you want to get taken out by Theory. I mean, Nameless is going to pick up one, but, you know, that bomb is down in a really bad spot, Doc. That is a terrible situation. Nameless, he's got to put himself in open water. But he is actually spotting lots of plays. He's taken down two. Can he get the clutch? It's going to be Nameless versus Sharp. And, oh, I actually thought he threw him there for a second. Got a little bit too excited. But the clock was his enemy there. Sharp, he obviously decided to, you know, chill in the corner for a little bit. He knew Nameless had to make some plays. And that is an easy round on the board for TK. And I just saw, you know, the producer here at MLG actually just tweeted out... Clayster got seven kills from the first three rounds of the Search and Destroy. Yeah, and you know, that's that's who I'm on board with. I'm going to go on board with TK, and I'm going to go on board with Clayster, especially, you know, and we're seeing a lot of versatility out of him with rocking different guns, you know, some machine guns, ARs. I mean, he's definitely going to have a little bit more freedom than he had on Complexity to just oh. use different guns, and I mean, right there, that's a great nade from Parasite, and it's going to be into a three-on-two situation. You're going to have Nameless, Parasite, and Miracles against Theory and Neslo. I'm loving what Thierry's doing here. He's realized he's lost two teammates straight off the bat. You know, he's in a little bit of a precarious situation. So he's going to sit back a little bit. Let, let, let Neslo, sorry, a little bit of tongue twister. He's letting Do some him. work with his business. He's letting him. He's just going for it. And now they're playing a lot more defensive. Still, Miracles and Nameless alive. So Nameless definitely has been a real contender for MVP of this certain map right now. He's dropping a six for two, so definitely brilliant job by him. But now you're gonna see TK start to push up Neslo. Fury actually throwing down that smoke, giving some support, and he's gonna try and scope it out. But he just lost his teammate there. Spots the play through the smoke, they're choking the shots, and that could be absolutely catastrophe for him. Yeah, and I mean, those are shots that you, you in this type of situation, those are, those are ones you gotta hit. You gotta get those kills. And you know, right there, I mean, if he's able to take out Miracles, it works into a one-on-one, -on -one, and it's a lot it's a very beneficial situation for him. I mean, one-on-one, -on -one, it's search and destroy. At least you have a 50% chance, you know, you pretty much find the guy first. So, I mean, big plays right there out of Miracles. And like I was saying earlier, I think he's the player who's really going to need to step up. And, you know, they're trying to recreate what they had with Impact when they had Karma. And which, what, which, why wouldn't you? And I think instead of, mm. instead of having, you know, Nameless kind of fill uh, Karma's shoes, so to speak, I think Miracles is a player that... I mean, I want to watch. He's super aggressive, and he's his shot is so 
just consistent. Oh. And, you know, right here, I mean, ooh, he's, ooh. it was a very aggressive push right there out of TK, and that is something definitely the Curse players didn't expect. They didn't expect it too, because normally when the defensive players, they, you know, sit back a little, they patrol their own border, but TK, they were brutal about it, straight in the faces of Curse, and it's paid out for them. Now, Parasite. He is left in a one-on-three. He has a lot of work to do. He's only got that Remington. Let's see if he can make something happen with that sun grenade. Get some indication as to where the players are, but that's not going to work for him as he's just trying to scout them out. What he's got to do here, pick up one player, maybe work for another kill, but he's still got plenty of time on the clock. He's just got to work it right now. There's no need to rush it, but look at him. He's scouting out right now, and all of the TK players are going so passive right now after that early aggressive push. Yeah, and you know, it's a really smart play out of TK. I mean, it's pretty much what we talked about earlier out of the curse guys. And you know, I mean, right there, I believe that's Theory that's able to take him out. And you know, I'd like to see Curse make some adjustments. You, you, you've already seen Theory. He's used the same spot about, I would say, th two or three times already that you can pretty much gauge that he's going to be there and he's going to try and watch out cross to B. And you'd really like to see maybe them go on to that three story and make that jump from the mid train to the three story and kind of nade him out of that spot or just force, force some kind of action over there. You can't let a player get in that kind of power position and just keep it using it over and over and over again. Exactly, they need to figure out that counter because it is just not working out well for them. But look at this, TK being aggressive again. They did lose one of their teammates, but Fury, he started up taking out Parasite there, using that M, M card to perfection. And they've actually switched it up now. They're going for that B bomb site. You don't see this very often. And it's working well for them. Sharp nearly with a two piece there, but he's actually going to lose also his squad mate there, Clayster. So it's all up to Fury again in a one on two. I'm saying that so often right now. Players yeah. are just, you know, dropping like flies straight off the bat, and then they're left in these really precarious situations where they have to rotate around the map and try and make something happen. But once again, Fury, one and two, plenty of time, but he's just trying to make something happen right now. Yeah, and you know, right there, I mean, that was two huge plays out of, I believe it was uh, Killer and Miracles. That It was a two-on-three situation. They won two quick gun battles, and they were able to force it into this two-on-one and it's extremely interesting to see how they're going to play this. And, you know, I like this play from Theory. We don't see too many people go all the way back towards B. And he's able oh. to kill Killa. And, I mean, Miracle's going to know where he's at right now. And he's able to pick him up with great shots from top Owens. Nice. I mean, that is just what I was talking about with Miracles. I mean, his shot is unreal. It is. Just look at this kill cam. He scouts him out, lines him up. That is a brilliant job for him. And that is actually quite a long-range kill by Miracles. I like that spot he was in too. It's kind of one of those spots where it's so aggressive, you just don't think they're going to be there. Like, it's almost an idiotic spot that you just don't expect it from him. And it paid out quite well for him. And now you're going to actually see the scores tied up. So every single time TK get a ball, get one on the board, you see Curse just answering back, getting one for themselves. Right, I think the real just crutch of this game is that, you know, Curse really cannot win an offensive round. That they, they really don't have many strategies. And right here, I mean, you get a first blood with Killer getting a pick onto Theory. And you're going to need to win this round. I'm on board with Clayster. And he's actually sitting in pretty much the same spot that uh, Theory was sitting in. And, you know, he's getting taken out by Miracle. So it's all at the Sharp. And Sharp gets taken out. Caster Curse switching screens. I'm just killing people left and right tonight, Doc. And, you know, that's going to be a huge win for Curse because they really need this map. And I think going into Blitz, if they were able to win this map, they're going to have the advantage in that game mode as well. Absolutely. And I'm just looking at that actual scoreboard. Sharp is still two for six. He is having a horrific time right now. And he's really, with the situation TK you're in, he needs to actually start to make some plays, start to make, you know, some ripples in the wave in a sense. But as of right now, it's just really lackluster by him. So let's actually get on board with him. I want to see if he can switch it up right now. TK, one round away. If they lose this, they will go. They will actually tough the series. So Curse in a good position. But TK, they don't want that to happen right now. And they already lost two of their players straight off the bat. This is not good for them. No, Make man, it that's... three. And it's all up to Fury. who just gets taken out. Yeah, you know, that was a brilliant push right there. To kill her. He was able to push up. And instead, he was able to push a spot that you would normally push with a sub. And he actually pushed it with an AK, and he was able to get two kills on the cross, which is, I mean, that just ruined the entire rush out of TK. They were really trying to plan an aggressive rush, and it was pretty much shut down single-handedly by Killer. I mean, you see Clayster doing work at 10 and 9, Sharp, like you said, at 2 and 7. 
But really, Nameless stuck out for me right there. 10-4. and four. Nameless was one of the better search and destroy players on Black Ops 2. One of the best snipers that we had on the circuit. So it's good to see that he's definitely progressing as a player from how they were at Columbus. Because at Columbus, they weren't they were not very good at Columbus. They were expected to be a lot better. Yeah. They didn't play very well. And I mean, you see this team actually coming into just championship form right now. Yeah, they are starting to look, you know, really confident. And they're actually starting to show in the way that they're playing. I mean, a lot more aggressive there. You know, not kind of being too defensive about it. They're not like, oh, if we lose this gun battle, we're going to be in a sticky situation. Yeah. No, they're just going for it. They're like, we will win this gun battle. We will make something happen. And it's actually working quite well for them. And Curse, they took out that search and destroy. And going back to what you said, you did say that TK are a more dominant search and destroy team. And yeah. I got to question that right now. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you know, that's a huge win for Curse because you can, usually the way it's gone with TK throughout time, this is before their roster changes, they're a completely different team now, but if you can take the searches off TK, you can pretty much win the series against them. So it's going to be extremely interesting to see how they're going to come out and play Blitz. I have not seen this team play Blitz yet. Uh, I don't know how they're going to fill the role of Gunjar, who's an extremely aggressive player. But, uh, you know, when we come back, we're going to have TK against Curse Las Vegas, both new rosters. It looks like it's going to be Blitz Warhawk, so stay right here.